There is a report from Ibn Mas'ud anhu and Abdullah ibn Abbas anhuma in their words man lam tanhahu salatuhu anil fahsha'i wal munkar lam yazdad biha min Allah illa bu'da it is a scary one that whoever does not find that their prayer takes them away from evil obscene deeds from sinning then they did not get from their prayer except for distance salah is qurb it is a slila, it's a connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is meant to bear closeness. Closeness. And here, if you are treating your prayer like a chore, or maybe even doing it just to get by, then it may actually be distancing you further from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah can be said about this, that if the most potent form of connection that you have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does absolutely nothing for you, then at the very least, there's a hardening of the heart that's taking place. Someone that comes into the religion for the first time and learns the salah for the first time might taste its sweetness quicker than someone that's been praying for so many years. And inshallah ta'ala, the salah is documented for them, but the heart has not been softened in any way. And the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not being established. Now there are two incidents with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that are very important in regards to this ayah. Which is that there's a difference between a person who is praying and who is falling even in fahisha, even in deep sin, but that goes to their prayer and hopes that their prayer will cure them from that and seeks a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but is at a particular point in their journey. You see, a lot of times you diagnose two people wrong because you, you frame them based on the output in the exact same way. The munafiq could look indistinguishable from the struggling Muslim to the outward eye. But there's something of the heart. And so we find in an authentic narration, that the companions came to the Prophet and they said, Ya Rasulullah, inna fulana yusalli bin nahar wa yasriqu bil layl. Think about this lifestyle. This man prays in the day or prays at night and steals during the day. Think about this. He prays during the day, he steals at night. He lives between salah and sariqah, theft. And the Prophet responded and he said, inna salatahu la tarda'uhu, that his prayer will one day bring him back. And another, another authentic narration from Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, that there was a young man from the Ansar. And realize no one was Muslim that long with the Prophet because his entire mission on earth was two decades alayhi salatu wasalam. And if you're an Ansari, that means that it's less than a decade. And so this young man used to pray with the Prophet but look at his description by the companions. ثُمَّ لَا يَدَعْ شَيْئًا مِنَ الْفَوَاحِشِ إِلَّا رَكِبَةً There wasn't a single one of the obscene deeds except that he was guilty of those deeds. فَوُصِفَ لَهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ حَالَ He was spoken about to the Prophet ﷺ, described to the Prophet ﷺ in this regard. And the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ صَلَاتَهُ سَتَنْهَاهُ يَوْمًا One day his prayer is going to stop him. One day his prayer will, will bring him back. Look, the man has shut a lot of doors between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't shut the most important door that he has. And to all of the people in here that are struggling, even with a major sin, don't diminish the major sin, but don't let shaitan get in your head and tell you, what's the point of your salah if you're committing this sin?